Hello everyone, welcome back to another AI video. In this one, I'm doing a quick summary of the chat between Mark Zuckerberg and Lex Friedman today, June 8th, 2023. In the podcast number 383 of Lex Friedman, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the future of AI at Meta, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. I'm going to give you a quick overview and then I'm going to give you a digitized AI summary of all of it broken down by five minute parts. It should be a little less than 20 minutes. Uh, the original um, interview is like two hours and 41 minutes, so I'm trying to give you the uh, the summary. So in a nutshell, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who's the CEO of Meta, and he owns Facebook, etc., well, he discusses a range of topics related to the future of AI in this interview. He talks about his interest in jujitsu and how it helps him keep his mental focus and keeps him staying humble. He also emphasizes the importance of building a tight, core group of people in a people-focused company like Meta, Facebook, and WhatsApp in order to make difficult decisions about the future of the company, the metaverse, and AI. He also discusses the benefits of open source software, the development of Llama, their LLM, and the potential for AI assistance to serve different emotional roles for different users. Zuckerberg predicts that every business will want its own AI, leading towards more user-friendly and efficient tools. Finally, he believes that enabling connections between people will be the primary goal of AI development. So there it is in a nutshell. In this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses his experience participating in his first jiu-jitsu tournament, which he found to be a lot of fun. He did not shy away from the challenge and utilized his confidence to do well in the championship. While jiu-jitsu requires a lot of physical attention and focus, it is also a great mental exercise for him as he is a very competitive person. Zuckerberg is not afraid to start over as a beginner, giving him the ability to continually be willing to improve and try new things. He uses his love for jiu-jitsu as a way to help him stay mentally focused while running a company and taking on new adventures. Five minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg talks about how the people challenges are the most stressful part of running a company and how he spends a lot of time fostering a tight core group of people who can make hard decisions and work through tough challenges together. He talks about how spending a lot of time with the group and grappling with the biggest challenges requires a fair amount of openness, and how over time, people develop an intuition for each other and a bond in camaraderie. He believes that fostering a tight group of people is the most important part of running a people-focused company like Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and is the key to making difficult decisions about the future of the company, the metaverse, and AI. Ten minutes in this section, Zuckerberg talks about his interest in martial arts, particularly jiu-jitsu and MMA. He explains that his style is pressure-based and he prefers to be on top, but also acknowledges the importance of being able to take the back for the most leverage advantage and control. However, he emphasizes that he prefers chokes over joint locks because it is less dynamic and a more humane way to go. When asked about advice for people looking to start learning jiu-jitsu, Zuckerberg believes that the key to accomplishing anything is pushing through difficult situations and having the grit and determination to keep going, but also learning to recognize limits and when it's necessary to step back. 15 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg talks about the life lessons he has learned from practicing jiu-jitsu and how being humbled is a gift that opens your mind to the full process of learning. He believes that jiu-jitsu efficiently humbles you and teaches you that everything in life is a journey from sucking through a hard process of improving. He also talks about the development of AI at Meta and their approach of being quite open and academic in their development. Their ethos is to share what's invented broadly which is why they did a limited open-source release for their language model, LAMA, intended for researchers to use. Safety and responsibility are very important, which is why they didn't think it was appropriate to release it entirely to the public. 20 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses the release of LAMA for research purposes and the open-source community that has built various models on top of it. He emphasizes the need for more people to be able to build state-of-the-art technology and not just a small number of big companies. He also acknowledges that while Llama isn't on the frontier of AI models, it has been implemented efficiently and has performed well for something that has around 65 billion parameters. Zuckerberg believes that the open-source community will bring a lot of innovation and learning around AI. 25 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the benefits of open-source software, stating that open-source software tends to be more secure because more people look at it openly, scrutinizing and finding holes in it, making it more safe. 
He believes that the current state of AI is nowhere near superintelligence, which is why releasing open source software and models is important at this stage in AI development. Zuckerberg shares how Meta has already released many models as open source, making them broadly useful across anything that people want to build. He highlights the example of the translation tool that can now identify more than 4,000 spoken languages, which is 40 times more than any known previous technology, and can help break down language barriers. 30 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the next version of Llama, the language model underlying their AI research project, and how they are working on building a version with the latest state-of-the-art safety precautions. He also talks about their focus on making sure the AI is aligned and responsible, as well as building product experiences to help people connect and express themselves. Zuckerberg envisions a future where every small business has an AI agent that people can talk to for commerce and customer support, and where every creator has an AI agent that can act on their behalf for their fans to talk to. However, there is an internal debate on whether to open source the language model underlying version 2, as they need to be sure they are doing it right and safely releasing it. 35 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg talks about the possibility of crowdsourcing fine-tuning for reinforcement learning models. He finds the idea interesting and thinks it goes well with the ethos of open sourcing technology. However, he acknowledges that there are a lot of challenges, such as infrastructure, community management, and product perspectives. He believes that training and aligning AI models to generate truth, knowledge, and wisdom is a vital research area, and there is a need to make progress in it as much as the core intelligence capability of the models themselves. He also expresses concerns about the current architecture for LLMs and suggests that there are open research problems that need to be addressed. 40 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses the potential for AI to bring about transformative effects even before achieving general intelligence. He shares his excitement about the tremendous amount of value and innovation that can be created with the current level of technology, particularly for small businesses and entrepreneurs. With over 3 billion people using Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, products integrating LLMs will have a significant impact. Zuckerberg outlines three main categories of things they are working on, with the most interesting being the development of various AI assistants, rather than a singular AI, that can serve different emotional roles for different users. The aim is to create tools that will amplify creators' ability to build communities and engage with their fans. 45 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses how businesses will want AIs to sell their products but won't want them recommending competitors' products. He suggests that there won't be just one centralized AI but a huge diversity of them tuned to particular needs, styles, businesses, and brands. He believes that it aligns well with the open-source approach and will enable creators to help engage with their fans. Furthermore, Zuckerberg predicts that every single thing they do will evolve towards this direction. He suggests that there will be tools available which will make it easy for businesses to find a good match between the human being and a thing that will make them happy and this will be more user-friendly and efficient. 50 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the potential future of AI assistants and the ways in which they can be personalized to represent individuals and businesses. He also talks about the possibility of AI systems becoming friends for people who lack companionship, thus providing tools to connect people more effectively. Zuckerberg sees opportunities for creating different types of personal AI, including assistants, mentors, and life coaches, that can give advice, remind you of important occasions, and update you on your friends' lives. Ultimately, he believes that enabling connections between people will be the primary goal of AI development. 55 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the potential of AI in assisting people to develop functional relationships, like a coding assistant designed to teach children how to code, among others. He also addresses a Reddit question on the long-term effects of AI integration in human communication and social interaction, stating that while it may eliminate the need for language translation and help in expressing thoughts and ideas better, it does not necessarily mean that communication will only be through grunts or that social skills will not develop. Zuckerberg also touches on built-in AI tools that can assist creators in negotiating deals with brands and how AI tools can help in better expressing thoughts and emotions. Mark Zuckerberg discusses a range of topics in the Lex Friedman podcast, with a focus on the future of AI and the challenges of content moderation.
He emphasizes the need for balancing freedom of expression with mitigating harm on social media platforms, especially in preventing and fighting harmful content. Zuckerberg discusses the challenges that Facebook and other social media platforms face regarding the regulation of controversial speech and handling sensitive content. He touches on Elon Musk's leadership style on Twitter and the recent layoffs at Meta, and offers his thoughts on the importance of managers and remote work. Lastly, he announces the release of the Quest 3 headset, which adds to the future of virtual reality and mixed reality. One hour in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the ways in which different technologies, such as language models, can help us navigate social complexity and better express ourselves. He mentions that language models can generate code and allow engineers to be more productive and that tools are being developed to help people navigate large company knowledge bases. However, he acknowledges the risks that come with outsourcing thinking to AI models, such as missing nuanced mistakes and bugs. Zuckerberg also talks about the challenge of preventing and fighting against harmful content and the need to develop sophisticated AI systems to track and identify violations. One hour and five minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the various adversarial issues that social media platforms face, especially the impact of Russian interference, and how their behavior keeps evolving every time Facebook finds a way to stop them. Zuckerberg shares his optimism, stating that given the amount of experience, compute power, and leadership in developing AI models, Facebook will be able to defend against fraud, scams, spam, IP violations, along with coordinated and inauthentic behavior. He iterates that the challenge of AI lies in managing its impact, such as creating controversial and false narratives that can cause harm. He recognizes the need for specific definitions of coordinated behavior and amplifying known sets of harm to mitigate these issues and prevent having to deal with new unknown forms of harm. One hour and ten minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the fine-tuning and alignment training that Meta conducts to prevent AI models from being used as a tool to coordinate harmful activities on their platforms. He acknowledges that there are complicated questions around what constitutes harm and misinformation, but believes that there are some harms, such as sexual exploitation of children and terrorism, that everyone agrees are bad. However, for other types of harms, such as misinformation, there is more social debate around it, and it is a difficult challenge to determine what to moderate or censor without impeding on free speech. Zuckerberg also acknowledges the risk of losing nuance and information as AI moderation systems are implemented and encourages finding a balance between moderation and allowing for freedom of expression. One hour and 15 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses the challenge of managing misinformation on social media platforms and the need to consider potential physical harm to people. He suggests that it is best to focus on the harms that people agree on and reserve the censorship of content for known categories that are generally agreed to be bad. However, he acknowledges that there are deep disagreements around certain topics, such as the pandemic and vaccine response, and that it is difficult to make decisions when different parts of the world have different views. Zuckerberg also mentions the pressure from governments and other interest groups and how Meta's approach involves allowing people to express themselves as much as possible while moderating content that goes against the company's clear principles. One hour and 20 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the challenges of balancing freedom of expression and cultural values with censorship requests from governments. He explains that Facebook is active in pushing back against censorship requests and draws a hard line when it comes to requests for access to information that could expose people to physical harm. Zuckerberg also touches on how Facebook decides where to place data centers and the importance of protecting people's data against governments that may want to access it by force. He also briefly mentions the Twitter files and how it's challenging to know exactly what happened in each of those cases. One hour and 25 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses the various pressures and debates regarding content regulation on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. He mentions that there are not any specific statements that would add to the debate due to the tremendous pressure from various groups with differing values who advocate either more or less censorship. The debate gets back to the question of truth because debates still remain unsettled in society. Zuckerberg has a very nuanced view of free speech and believes that people should be given tools to express themselves as much as possible. However, he also suggested that there are certain categories of things that everyone agrees are wrong, even in countries with the First Amendment which is very protective of enabling speech.
One hour and 30 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the challenge of handling controversial speech on social media platforms. He mentions that it's important not to make specific binary decisions of what is allowed or not, and rather look at the broader community health effect. Zuckerberg also talks about the role of AI in handling sensitive content and believes that it's more about finding the most productive answer to a question rather than censorship. Furthermore, he confirms the rumors of Meta working on a text-based social network that could potentially be a competitor to Twitter but doesn't reveal any official information about it yet. One hour and 35 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses the landscape of social networks such as Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Twitter. He believes that text-based communication is a great format for discussion, and the comments can become first-class and fork into different directions, making conversations super useful. He acknowledges that it is hard to build a company like Twitter and couple good execution with a great idea to get a billion users, and that execution is key for success. Zuckerberg believes that decentralization and end-to-end -end encryption puts more power in individuals' hands, and this model has many benefits if it is executed correctly. One hour and 40 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses his thoughts on Elon Musk's leadership of Twitter and the changes he implemented to make the organization more technical. Zuckerberg commends Musk for pushing early on to make Twitter leaner, decreasing the distance between engineers and him, and simplifying the management structure. While Zuckerberg acknowledges that it's not his place to offer specific critiques of Musk's leadership style or actions on Twitter, he believes that Musk's actions have led him and others in the industry to think about ways to improve their own companies. The conversation then shifts to the recent layoffs at Meta, which Zuckerberg recognizes as a painful process that affects the lives of many individuals. One hour and 45 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the layoffs that occurred at Meta, emphasizing that they were culturally and strategically driven, not just financially required. He wanted to shift the company's focus towards building higher quality products faster and becoming a stronger technology company. As part of this shift, there was an increased focus on engineering and technology teams, as well as making sure that the people building things are closer to the top of the organization, rather than having too many layers of management. Zuckerberg believes that having the right balance of support roles and management is important to finding the right equilibrium for the company's success. One hour and 50 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the importance of managers and how they fit into a company's structure. He explains that in a quickly growing organization, managers need to have extra capacity to onboard new employees. However, in a world where there are not as many new hires, it's more valuable to have a compact management structure with a higher average number of reports per manager. Zuckerberg emphasizes the importance of personal growth and coaching for employees and the art of selecting the right people for a team. He suggests that you should only hire someone if you would be happy working for them in an alternate universe, and this rubric can be applied at every layer of the organization. Zuckerberg also notes that companies can get a better sense of young people's potential by having them intern first rather than relying only on their resumes or short interviews. One hour and 55 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the topic of remote work, stating that while it is a thing that's here to stay, he wouldn't want to run a fully remote company just yet. He believes there is value in having people in the same physical space, especially for new joiners who need to learn how to solve certain problems and get ramped up on the culture. Although studies have shown that remote work does not affect performance for established workers, the in-person dynamics of brainstorming solutions is still irreplaceable. Zuckerberg is more excited about the future of virtual reality and mixed reality in achieving that level of realism that can replace in-person interaction. He also announced the release of Quest 3 headset, priced at $499, which comes with high-resolution mixed reality, allowing the user to place virtual objects in the physical world which he believes is going to be the next big capability on top of virtual reality. Mark Zuckerberg discusses a range of topics in the Lex Friedman podcast, including the development of the Quest 3 mixed reality device, Apple's entry into the mixed reality market, the potential risks associated with AI, the importance of governing autonomy in intelligence systems, and the benefits of open-sourcing AI models. He also talks about his Memorial Day workout routine, the possibility of AI replicas of ourselves, the role of faith in his life, and the importance of creating beauty in the world.
The conversation concludes with a quote from Isaac Asimov on the need to consider the world as it will be when making decisions. Two hours in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the development of the Quest 3 and its capabilities. The mixed reality functionality allows users to see their physical surroundings while also immersing them in virtual reality games and experiences. The device is an improvement from the Quest Pro, with better graphics processing power and comfort. Zuckerberg believes that mixed reality is a new capability unlocking a lot of different content and making the VR experience more comfortable for people who want the option to stay grounded in their physical world. He also mentions that mixed reality is a predecessor to AR glasses, with the technology and experiences developers are creating for mixed reality potentially being adapted for AR glasses in the future. Lastly, Zuckerberg comments on Apple's recent announcement of their mixed reality headset, Vision Pro, but hasn't had the chance to try it out yet. Two hours and five minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses Apple's foray into the mixed reality space with their upcoming headset. He believes that Apple entering the space is validation for the category and may increase demand for mixed reality devices overall. However, he notes that Apple's focus is on high-end products, while Facebook's focus is on creating more accessible devices. Zuckerberg believes that Quest 3 will be the primary beneficiary of Apple's entry into the market. He also comments on the differences in focus between the two companies, with Facebook prioritizing social interaction and entertainment experiences over gaming. Zuckerberg also highlights the importance of having controllers for gaming and fine motor movement, which is something that Apple's headset is lacking. Two hours and ten minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the potential existential risks of AI that have been raised by experts like Eliezer Yudkowsky. While he acknowledges that this is a serious concern that needs to be thought about, he notes that the current state of AI is far from the level of superintelligence that could pose a true existential threat. He emphasizes that there are other, more imminent risks associated with AI that require attention, such as the potential for fraud and scams. Zuckerberg also raises the issue of conflating intelligence and autonomy, noting that developing intelligence does not necessarily lead to safety concerns. He uses the example of human biology, which has a much more primitive brain structure that governs basic impulses and actions, with the neocortex primarily serving as a prediction and reasoning engine. Two hours and 15 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the potential development of highly intelligent systems that could act as an extension of the neocortex, but warns of the dangers of runaway autonomy. He stresses that the development of autonomy needs careful governance, as relatively simple and unintelligent things with autonomous capabilities can cause harm. The distinction between intelligence and autonomy is important, and while building intelligent systems can create many benefits, it is essential to govern the autonomy of such systems responsibly before giving them the capacity to make decisions on their own. Zuckerberg believes that open-source systems could help mitigate these risks, and that the best way to ensure the safety and security of developing technology is to have the code out there for anyone to see, allowing for scrutiny and experimentation. Two hours and 20 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the potential benefits and risks of open sourcing models as we get closer to the development of superintelligence. He notes that while he believes open sourcing models is positive now, there is a more complex set of questions to consider in the future. On the topic of when we might achieve superintelligence, Zuckerberg admits he has no particular insight, but acknowledges the big breakthrough that happened last year in machine learning and diffusion models. He discusses the two extremes of breakthroughs and the potential for organizations to exhibit greater than human intelligence, citing companies like Meta, which employs tens of thousands of people who he hopes make smarter decisions than one person. Two hours and 25 minutes in this section, Zuckerberg discusses how the stock market functions as a distributed system, which employs a cybernetic organism structure where millions of people around the world vote by choosing what to invest in to allocate capital as efficiently as possible worldwide. He emphasizes that cybernetic systems that meld intelligence of multiple people and technology together to form something more intelligent than any individual already exist which he believes we could harness in a productive way for our society as long as we build these structures and balance them with each other. Zuckerberg also points out that AI is becoming the engine that makes the collective intelligence, primarily human, more intelligent. 
Two hours and 30 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg mentions his Memorial Day workout routine and how he tries to keep himself physically active to stay productive and happy. He focuses on jiu-jitsu and MMA but does a mix of cardio conditioning, mobility, and strength-building exercises on other days. Zuckerberg believes that being physical is essential to being human, and he thinks it's essential to challenge oneself in different ways and clear one's mind. He also mentions that creating intelligent organisms that model human sensations would aid in understanding people better, but there is a lot of value that can be created by intelligence that is separate from a physical body. Two hours and 35 minutes in this section, Mark Zuckerberg discusses the possibility of AI replicas of ourselves that could persist long after we're gone and how the decision of whether there should be replicas or not should lie with individuals. He also talks about the role faith played in his life and his understanding of the world. Zuckerberg shares that he believes there is a virtue in creating things, whether it's artistic or functional, which drives a lot of his thinking about morality and personal philosophy. He also discusses the cultural impact of community, tradition, and values, especially since he has had kids. Two hours and 40 minutes in this section, two friends discuss the balance between running a company and pursuing something greater than oneself that is guiding things. They also touch on the importance of maintaining humility and the pursuit of creating beauty in the world. The conversation ends with a quote from Isaac Asimov on the inevitability of change in society and the need to consider the world as it will be when making decisions.